Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to take a look at a spherical capacitor that has two dielectrics. So the inner radius is R, the outer radius is 3R, and we have two layers of dielectric. The first one with dielectric constant K1, the second one with dielectric constant K2. What is the capacitance of this capacitor? Well, normally the capacitance of a capacitor is equal to the charge divided by the potential that pushes a charge onto the capacitor. But in case of multiple layers like that, the way we want to write the equation is that the capacitance, the total capacitance, is equal to the charge on the capacitor divided by the sum of the potentials across each of the layers. V1 is the potential across this layer, V2 is the potential across that layer. And how do we find the potential across each layer? Well, we start with the definition of the electric field, that the electric field is by definition the potential difference divided by the distance across the electric field. And we can then say that potential can be written as E times R. And since we know that the electric field on spherical capacitors is not constant, it varies with radius, we can then write this in the differential form, dV is equal to E times dR. So now we need to find the expression for the electric field in each of the two layers. Well, we use Coulomb's law and the equation for the electric field from a, from a point source. And so we can say that the electric field on layer 1 is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times K1. K1 is a dielectric constant of layer 1 times Q over R squared. And for layer 2, all we have to do is just change the dielectric. We can say that E2 is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times K2 times Q over R2. Remember that in capacitors that are in series, and basically you can think of this as capacitors in series, the charge is the same for each. All right, now we can plug that into our electric field right here. So we can say that the potential difference as a function of R is equal to the electric field. So dV1 is equal to E1 times dR, in this case, uh, dV1, or actually, what I want to write, really, is that V1 is going to be equal to the integral of dV1, which is equal, going to be equal to the integral of minus the integral. Why did I say minus? Well, it turns out that as R increases, the electric field decreases, so that's that inverse relationship. And we're going to integrate from the outer to the inner, so from 2R to R for layer 1, times electric field for 1, which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times K1 times Q over R squared times dr. And of course, we take all the constants out. So we can write this as minus Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times K1 times the integral from 2R to R of R to the minus 2 dr. It's better to write in that form because it makes it easier to integrate. So all we have to do now is add 1 to the exponent divided by the new exponent. So V1 is equal to minus Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times K1 times R to the minus 1 divided by minus 1, the new exponent, integrated, and the limits are 2R to R. Now notice that these two negatives will cancel out. I can put the are in the denominator, so this is Q divided by 4 pi epsilon sub naught times K1 times 1 over R with the limits going from 2R to R. So plug in the upper limit, see what we get. It's equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon sub naught times K1 times 1 over R minus 1 over 2R. And we can simplify that. We can put that over a common denominator of 2R. So that would be 2R minus R over 2R, which is R over 2R. So this can be written as Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times K1 times, that would be, let's see here, 2R minus R over 2R squared. And notice that I can factor out an R and I can divide that by an R down there, and the two goes out here. So finally, when you simplify everything, you get Q over 8 pi epsilon sub naught K1 times R. And that would be the potential 
for the first layer. So the potential difference from there to there is Q over 8 pi epsilon sub naught K1 times R. So I combine the 4 and the 2, make that into an 8. I factor out an R, um, and I have 2 minus 1 is 1, so R divided by R squared is simply 1 over R. That's why we end up with an R in the denominator. We can do the same thing for V2. Now V2 is going to be equal to the same thing right here, which is Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. But instead of K1, we have K2, and we have 1 over R, and the limits, oop, that's a terrible looking R, so R like that. And the limits now, we're going to go from 3R to 2R. From 3R to 2R, when we plug that in, we get Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught K2 times upper limit, 1 over 2R, minus lower limit, 1 over 3R. Notice that the common denominator will be 6R squared. Let me show you how that works. So this is a little bit more tricky, so Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times K2 times, this will be 3R minus 2R over 6R squared. So notice that 3R minus 2R is 1R. That will cancel out with the R squared down below, and we still have a 1 over 6. So V2 is equal to Q divided by 24 pi epsilon sub naught K2 times R. So that's V2. We're now ready to plug those two in here and see what we get. Okay, so C total is equal to charge divided by V1, which is Q over 8 pi epsilon sub naught K1 times R plus Q over 24 pi epsilon sub naught K2 times R. All right, now all we have to do is simplify this to get the final answer. First of all, all the Qs disappear. That's once. We can factor out a denominator. So C total is equal to 1 over, and let's see here. Hmm. We have 1 over 8 pi epsilon sub naught times R, which leaves us with 1 over K1 plus 1 over 3K2. So notice that we factor out in the denominator and an A, a pi, an epsilon sub naught, and an R, leaving us with a K1 and a 3K2 over here. Okay, now we can combine that. We can, when you divide by fraction, same as multiplying. So this becomes 8 pi epsilon sub naught times R divided by here the common denominator would be 3K1, K2, so we end up with 3K2 plus K1 divided by 3K1, K2, which can go to the numerator, and since I'm out of room here, let me move it over there, so let's move it over here, and when we move to the numerator, I get 24 pi epsilon sub naught R times K1, K2, divided by 3K2 plus K1. And that would be the capacitance of a spherical capacitor with two layers of dielectric, K1 and K2. And that's how we do that.